All right, guys, welcome back to the uh, third video in the series about clustering two Forti gates together in a high availability configuration. Our goal is to do active active. Uh, just as a little recap of the last two videos, we pulled this Forti gate out of the box, okay? And then we attached it to the network and got it up and running there through the CLI and then through the GUI to do what? To get a license to also maybe get it up to date, so on and so forth. This remote Forti gate should have always been running. All right, we did not do anything to this remote FortiGate. We just introduced a second one. Now, the second video, unfortunately, because of the limitation of my environment, I had to power this all down, okay? Um, so I could do the wiring itself. So we have the broadcast domains uh, matching up to the port number, so on and so forth. So, and then I went ahead and powered it up. And uh, normally we wouldn't have to do that. We would have just attached the cords or the, the cables and been fine. Now, something to take into consideration. When you do a cluster, normally the FortiGate that has the highest uptime that's been alive the longest, all right, becomes primary, okay? Um, so normally this remote FortiGate that's always been in our production will have the longest uptime. So it will be elected as the primary by default. There is other ways to change that, but not in our situation. So um, so when we introduce the second one, the second one has been alive lesser, so it's going to be the secondary. So there's not much we have to do to configure on the secondary, except for to tell it to join the cluster, tell it what heartbeats there are, and also uh, join it to our group. So we're going to do that next. All right, so let's go ahead and load up our... Windows PC. So this Windows PC is is this guy right here on the topology. Okay, um, and as you can see, our 10.0.2.254 is our main IP address we use for management. So we're going to administer to the uh, the remote FortiGate right here that's been up. So I'm going to go ahead and do admin. Now, normally, obviously, there'd be a big, nice, secure password there. Um, I like how it barks at you, by the way, in 5.6. Never did that in the previous versions. All right, here we go. All right. And this has everything running the way that we want it to, okay? Um, a couple of things that I just noticed that's going to get me into trouble is that I realized that I have two gigabytes of RAM allocated to this VM, all right? So um, as you can see now, I still have access to this FortiGate that I set up earlier, the secondary one that I pulled out of the box, all right? And it had an IP address of 10.0.2.253. So nothing has changed there with the wiring. All we did in the last video was plug everything together. We still have the IP addresses and so on and so forth, okay? So I just caught that, by the way. Um, no, nope, we're good. We are good. So you just want to make sure that that matched up, all right, guys? Because the FortiGates do have to be identical in the sense of um, their model number. And now, normally, if they're physical FortiGates, it's not a problem. Uh, but with the virtual machines, you have to be careful with that, okay? Uh, we actually look like we're good to go right there. So just making sure that they're the same there, okay? Also, the uptime. Now, I just rebooted these. Uh, and that was because of me plugging in the cables in my virtual environment. But if you notice, our primary FortiGate, or the one that we want to be primary, that has all the profiles that we have synced, or all the profiles that we have written um, already, right? So everything's set up just the way that we want it to. Uh, the reason why this becomes primary is because when we join that cluster, if we notice here, our uptime, all right, is is almost nine minutes whereas my my new FortiGate is a, like a minute behind <laughs> okay now normally that'd be very drastic okay there'd be a very very drastic difference between those uptimes but for right now just keep that in mind all right when it does its election process so let's go ahead and configure it are you ready so we're going to go over to our um system HA, okay. Now, if there's if you don't see HA here, there might be some features that you have to turn on. Um, anyways, but here's HA, and right now it's in standalone mode, so we don't want to do standalone. We're going to want to do active, active, so it does some form of load balancing, 
Okay. Now, device priority, we normally don't have to worry about. Um, but if there is a FortiGate you want to make sure will have precedence over the other, all right, you can give it a higher number. Now, you got to be careful with that, though, because normally by default, it's going to be uptime and not priority number. Um, but sure, I'll do this at 200 just to show that this is the one that I want. So now, normally, normally, um, what was I going to say there? Our, our FortiGates are going to have a default priority and we don't have to touch it. Okay. Now, the group name is important. This is case sensitive. So I'm just going to do example. All right. And the password is also important because this is how we authorize that FortiGate to join the cluster. Okay. So I'm going to be super cool and just do a password. All right. Here's a little eyeball to double check it. Okay. And then you have to ask yourself, do I want session pickup? Now, session pickup is where it tries to sync a part of its session table. All right. Um, if you do do session pickup, you'll have a seamless failover. OK, but if you have a lot of traffic that's trying to sync changes between these heartbeat links, just as a little caveat here, um, it might lose synchronization because of so many changes trying to happen across that heartbeat link. OK, um, anyways, a lot of the stuff I want to go into, but. Um, I'm going to try to keep this a little bit more short. Now, monitored interfaces are interfaces that if they go down, we're going to treat it like the device is physically down. All right. So um, this might be something like a, a, a primary connection, right, to a, a certain WAN interface. If for some reason that interface ever goes down, it will force a failover versus if a physical FortiGate just locks up. All right. So I'm going to leave that blank here. Um, I am going to set the heartbeat interfaces. So as you can see here, it wants to use port 4, but we're already using port 4. So I'm going to say no. Instead, I want you to use port 1 and port 2. All right. You can also set the priority to see which one is preferred. All right. That's going to be the, the heartbeat priority. All right. I really don't care. Um, I'm curious if it does some kind of like equal cost multipathing there, but I've never looked into it. So, um, but the last step here is very important though, and that's reserving the management interface. Now, the interface that we did was port 10. All right. So port 10. Now, somewhere in here in 563, I read somewhere where you can actually have your management interface reservation to stay port 6. Because right now, that's what we're using. We're using port 6 to access the FortiGate on 10.0.2.254. Now, the thing is, though, is once port um, 6 gets synchronized to this remote FortiGate 2, all right, whoever is the primary is going to have 10.0.2.254. So if this remote FortiGate is the primary, this is going to be its management IP address. If this FortiGate is the primary, this is still going to be its FortiGate. So what we're doing here, all right, is that we're reserving port 10, and we are going to give it an IP address that normally it would not allow it to give. So um, let's see if we can do this here. There was a big limitation in 5.4 that you couldn't do this in the GUI. Uh, but we're going to give the remote FortiGate 250. All right. We'll see if that allows that. Hopefully it takes it. And like I said, um, in the new 5.6, you're supposed to be able to give different IP addresses just to port 6. And it should work. I'll have to try that out later. For right now, I'm just going to do it the way that I want to. And that is going to be, or the way that I know, and that's going to be um, reserving a port 10. All right. So as you can see with the port 10, it doesn't have an IP address on it. All right. But we reserved that. So I must have screwed that up. Um, I can tell you right away. So why don't I go ahead and click here and hit edit. And they must have wanted the actual gateway. So like I said, I'm going to have to read more into that um, a little bit later. So I'm just going to do it the way that I know how to do it. So, all right, we'll test that out here. So, okay.
let's go ahead and do the next one, okay? So let's go over to our 10.0.2.253, which is going to be this FortiGate right here, all right? And we did this earlier in the first video. All right, I know. And now we're going to do the same. I'm going to go to System. I'm going to go to High Availability. I'm going to say it's an active active. Okay. This priority, I'm going to give a 100. Group name was example. All right. My password was super secret password. Now, obviously, just because I'm in a learning environment, it's the only reason why that's not long and secure. I'm going to do session pickup. I'm not going to do any monitored interfaces right now. But my heartbeat links are now ports 1 and 2. All right. I'm also going to reserve the management interface of port 10. All right. And by the way, guys, this is the first time I'm seeing this in 5.6. This is very different from 5.4. So in 5.4, it was just you did port 10, and that was that. And then you set the actual IP address in the CLI. Because if you try to do it through the GUI, they said that there was a conflict. Um, We'll see how that goes. I might be screwing this up completely, but I'd much rather do it while being recorded. Why? I have no clue. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and leave it 10.0.2.253. All right. So because we're already using it, it's not in use. Why not? All right. So just as a little recap, I reserved the management IP address to the remote FortiGate to 10.0.2.253. Zero and this one's two five three and it's not going to sync ten. All right. Um, we'll see how that goes. Anyways, now what happens is that once the cluster gets going, it might take a bit. Okay, but essentially it's going to start sending little heartbeats across the way, and it's going to use all of the heartbeat links to essentially elect a primary then once you're primary it's going to go ahead and elect a master okay and then once you have a master it will go ahead and it will elect um, the secondaries after that and then it should just work so but it does take a bit to discover all of it so i'm just going to sit here and maybe hit refresh until it recognizes it now, for some reason, if it doesn't, if it doesn't sync up here, what you're going to check is, A, if the settings here match up, all right? Because you have to have everything pretty much mirrored across all of them, all right? Same heartbeat links, make sure they're physically plugged in. You're going to want to make sure that your group name is okay with the password. You're going to want to make sure it's active-active, session pickup, all right? So on and so forth. Okay. And then, yeah, we'll just give it a moment. So sometimes it can take a full five, ten minutes for everything to happen. Uh, another thing that you can do if you have access to the console port on one of these bad boys is that you can actually console in and you'll start seeing some output here about the, the clustering information. So we'll give this a, a moment and see if it just doesn't do its magic. So, like I said, I've seen it take a bit. So, all right. Now, if that fails you, there's ways of actually um, doing a, doing a um, diagnose debug on the HA, and you can actually see the flow of the packets of what's happening. Hopefully, it won't, it won't come to that, so. Um, let me go ahead and pause the video. I'm going to give it five minutes and I'm going to come back and see if it doesn't all boot up. So it doesn't find the heartbeat link. So I'll be back guys.